property taxes. Am I right? I'm Ian of Austin. Let's talk about property taxes. And not just any property taxes, the low ones. Surprise. People move here and it's like they have no idea what the property taxes are like and then it's like they get slapped in the face. So if you're coming from a place like California, property taxes are what, less than 2% and you go over to some place like Houston, 4%. All that to say, by the end of this video, you're gonna learn two things. One, how to find out what the property taxes are gonna be when you move here. And two, which neighborhoods or areas in the Austin market have a low tax rate. Let's do the calculation first, because that's the fun part. Okay, so I go to ianofaustin.com, and I scroll down and I click on, let's say the first house that I see. I see the house is in Austin, which is Travis County. So if I wanted to know the tax rate, I could go to the Travis County appraisal website, but I already did that, so I know the property tax rate is 2.65. All I wanna do is consider that an annual percent. So that means a straightforward 2.75. Of course, I just open up the calculator, I type 450,000, and multiply that by oh, 0 0.0275, 0.0275, I hit enter, and that gives me $12,375. And since there's 12 months out of the year, I divide it by 12. And that brings me to $1,031. And so that is the property tax each month. So when you see those signs on the corner of the roads and they're like, your mortgage could be $800 a month, they are lying to you. They're not lying, but they're not telling you the whole truth. Really, it's the, the mortgage plus the tax. So you're already at, what, $1,800 uh, before you add on anything else like insurance and HOA fees. Before we look at neighborhoods, there are three general things that I think are just good to know. The first thing I want you to ask, is this a new construction area? The reason why, oftentimes they have a higher tax rate because uh, the developer had to pay all this money to develop the land. So the extra tax is really just homeowners paying back that development cost. The second thing is Austin proper, you know, the city of Austin generally has a lower tax rate than the suburbs of Austin. But keep in mind, the sales prices in Austin are usually higher than the suburbs. So uh, it, it's not a wash, but it's not as much of a gap as some people might think. And the third thing to keep an eye on is some houses have a tax exemption. So if you see somewhere on a website that someone's paying $5,000 in taxes for a million dollar house, that is possible. Probably not you though. They could be a disabled vet. They could be over 65. They could be raising cattle. And those are all tax exemptions, which apply to that person in that property. So as soon as that property sold, so let's say you buy it, those tax exemptions may not apply to you. Okay, let's see some neighborhoods. So I don't wanna spend a crazy amount of time here, but I want you to see that there are lots of areas that there are low tax rates. So what I did is I chose tax rates below 2.2. So that's pretty uh, substantial. All right, so I'm gonna start over to the east. Uh, let's see, so Manor, what we've got is anything that lights up here, so that little area, Briar Creek, low tax rate in Manor. Notice there aren't anything, there's nothing here. All these are houses, but none of them that have that kind of tax rate. Um, so if I'm, in, if I'm in Austin proper, there's tons. As I had mentioned, Austin proper generally has lower tax. Uh, you see over in Windsor Park, there's only a few, a little bit over to the right. Over by the campus, let's see, West Camp, I mean, that's a you know, $1.5 million house. Triangle, so this area doesn't have a lower ta have a low tax rate. Um, but you come around Oakmont, Oakmont does. Terrytown, taxes go up there. When you head left a little bit more, we're looking at, uh, yeah, along the, along the lake. These don't, but then as you go inland a little more, you have Westlake. For example, um, so there's a few here, you know, $8 million house, uh, almost $9 million. That's a uh, lower tax rate. The thing is, these are also houses that have been sold or active on the market. So there might be a few more, but if there's one in this area, then you can be pretty confident that that whole area, so all of Winsong Estate is going to have a good tax rate, okay? Uh, it's just that there aren't a lot of houses sold in that area. Uh, so if I'm looking, yeah, Allendale, there's nothing. Uh, what else do we have? Shoal Creek. So Shoal Creek is a good low tax area. All right, so I'm going to scroll out some, and we're going to get north. I live north, so 
Uh, I spent a lot of time in North Austin and all of those suburbs. So let's see, where are we at? Yeah, Tanglewood, nothing. I look over at Jollyville, Barrington Oaks. Yeah, those are not low taxes. So let me zoom out again. Okay, so if I look in Pflugerville. So over in Pflugerville, none of these. Isn't that interesting? Pflugerville, uh, most, of, most of the neighborhoods have a tax rate above that 2.4 that we're looking at, except for over here in Desau. So I'm going up. What else do we have? Round Rock. So I get excited because uh, a lot of people ask me about Round Rock, and I say, well, Round Rock actually has some pretty hefty taxes in a lot of areas. So if you see right here, almost none of Round Rock is lit up. We've got a little bit here, a little bit here, um, but, you know, like Siena and some of these other places, they, they uh, Terra Vista, those tax rates are uh, upwards of three. Cedar Park, Anderson Mill. Anderson Mill, uh, there's a few here. There's a section here. Otherwise, a lot of it's very bare, so your tax rate's going to be higher than that 2.4. I'm bringing it up to Leander. Notice, also very bare. The thing about Leander is there are a lot of places, first off, you have the rail right here, but there are a lot of places where it's new development, and so in order for them to bring the utilities, as I had mentioned, they had to increase the, the tax rate in that area. So Crystal Falls is a very popular place uh, anywhere along Whitestone, but you're not getting that, that tax benefit, that lower tax benefit. So I'm zooming out. I'm looking at Georgetown. Georgetown has a lot of property, you know, over by the airport, uh, a little bit over by the lake. So we're looking at these house prices. We're uh, almost a million, you know, half a million to a million. But then this one, I like this section. This is uh, Cimarron Hills. It's one of the neighborhoods that um, I've done North versus South video with another popular YouTube realtor. Anyway, and, th and so that tax rate is really reasonable here. So let's scroll down a little bit. I guess we should take a look at stuff that's south. So when you're out in Wimberley, um, so when you're out in Wimberley down here south, uh, that has a pretty good tax rate. So what's this? Wood Creek. Wood Creek is a good tax rate. Lower prices too. Oh, 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 got those. So I'm going to go back up some more. Let's look at Dripping Springs. So you've got a nice selection of houses that are a lower tax rate out here. So Circle C Ranch, that seems pretty good. That's a nice low tax rate. Where, where's Kyle and Buda? Okay, so Kyle and Buda, just because, you know, I hear people asking about them every once in a great while. Uh, Kyle, there are a couple sections here, but most of it is not a low tax rate. Kind of same thing over here with Buda. There is a neighborhood over here, so I would imagine that this section of the neighborhood is uh, a lower tax rate. All right, so I'm zooming way out just to kind of get a, a bird's eye view of it. And you can see the numbers of homes that have uh, lower tax rates. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, but a lot of websites won't show you the tax rate, which is why you can ask me, your realtor. And if taxes are a concern, we'll keep an eye on it when we're shopping for your home. Catch you later. See you in the next one.